Well, welcome everybody. Uh, we're excited to, to be here. I have uh, my son, oldest son, Brian Kessler here, as well as myself, Ken Kessler. Uh, Brian pastors the church uh, that my wife and I founded a number of years ago, Restoration Life Church, and together we started a ministry in Africa called Life School International. And so we've been working together in ministry for a uh, number, number of years, and we've been doing training um, in life school, uh, predominantly in Africa, since uh, 2003. Uh, but we're really excited now because the Lord is beginning, uh, has told us to to start a, a training school here locally, which when I say locally, it'll be, it will be here locally in Atlanta, Georgia, where we live, but it'll also be available around the world as well. It'll be a combination of online study, self-study, uh, and then gathering together, whether online through something like Zoom or live uh, with our meetings here in our local church. Uh, many options there. Uh, so we're excited about that. Uh, and what we want to do is to, I want to ask Brian a few questions that kind of will lead up and have led up to why we started this school uh, and are, are starting this school. It actually begins in September of this year. It's free. It's a combination of online uh, study and gathering, whether, again, whether through Zoom or, uh, or in live meetings. So uh, I want to ask Brian a few questions, and then that'll kind of stimulate some discussion uh, between us. Uh, one comment about the way we were dressed today. We're, this is not actually a uniform. We, we did not plan this. <laughs> I think if I answer our questions, I'm going to sit just like you. So we oh, look yeah, like yeah, twins. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As much as I tried not to become like my dad, I am becoming more like my dad every day. Yes, so yes, you are. We did not plan trying to try to do this. Yeah, but, that, that is true. So yep. not a uniform, but uh, I don't know what that's. Does that say you're more in style or I'm out of style? I'm not sure. I but. don't know. I think it's not more in style. I believe, <laughs> yeah. So. All right. Okay. So let's get to the questions. Uh, the first one is, Brian, I want to just ask you, what are your thoughts about the current decade that we've just entered? Um, I am very burdened about where we are right now. It's like uh, very burdened. I don't think I've been this burdened in a, probably ever. Um, I think the next decade is going to be going to transform everything we've known. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a we're going to be a very challenging decade. When you factor in the fact that you've got the UN and their 2030 agenda and Agenda 21, the push for global government, the division you've got in America, uh, e even recently in, in June, the World Economic Forum talked about a global reset to the economy. So, you know, the pandemic and all that's going on, the riots and everything like that has really... You know, the technology that's factored in as well. Um, the, I think that, that things are being shaken. It's kind of like the, the scripture, deep darkness will cover the earth, but the glory of God will rise on his people. On the one hand, deep darkness is increasing, but on the other hand, God's glory is also increasing. So, yeah, what do you think? Well, I, I agree with everything you've said. Yeah. As we moved from last December into January, one of the things that really the Lord just really put on my heart was that this n entire decade is going to be extremely turbulent. Yeah. Uh, I had no idea how quickly that would begin to be fulfilled with all that's happened with the pandemic and now all the issue, uh, the, the racial issues, the rioting and all the different things that uh, have arisen. And I think I really believe, and I, I hope this is not even true, but I really believe very seriously that uh, we're we're only in the beginning of what the turmoil will be yeah. for this decade with the, for the very reasons you cited I think there's a lot uh, that we have to be concerned about uh, and we don't this is not about doom and gloom it's about coming up with what the Lord has spoken to us yeah. in terms of a solution uh, to this. I think it's important to realize the, you know, definitely we are not doom and gloom prophets who are only going to point out the, the bad things that are happening. But the, the reality is we have never in our lifetime, in my lifetime, in your lifetime, we've never lived through the things we're living through 
and what we think is going to happen in the next decade. You know, you got the push for globalism. You've got the, the, the attack on America. You've got the division in America. You've got the technology that's going to allow socialism and control to be greater enforced and things like that. It's so important right now, I believe. I, I, in my opinion, I believe we're witnessing Revelation 17 and 18 rising up in the earth. Yeah, I agree. Um, So it, it's very important that we understand the times we live in. In fact, Jesus rebuked the, the leaders of his day and said, you, you can discern the weather patterns, but you can't discern the signs of the times. I think he would say something very similar to the leadership in our day, is you can discern the trends and culture, and you can discern what's happening here. But when I hear, and I'm not being critical, I'm really not, but when I hear how few voices, especially those with influence, are speaking about the times we live in, I think the Lord would say something very similar to a lot of us in leadership is you, you we need to discern the signs of the times. Yeah, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that goes into eschatological views yeah. and a number of other things that are there in the church. And by the way, uh, the Forerunner School that we're starting will deal with helping us understand the various eschatological views which are so pertinent and so important right now to know those. Very important because, you know, I just I read an article recently by a very prominent minister, and I won't go into all the details, but the basic idea was, you know, though it's really rough right now, things are only going to get better. And the idea behind that article was really what influenced that idea was his view on eschatology, how he right. interpreted the scriptures about the end times. And that caused him, to, to my opinion, to be overly positive. And, and I'm not trying to be negative, but he was overly positive in what he thought God was going to do. Um, and, I, and I believe God is going to do incredible things. I believe this is the church's finest hour. But we also have to realize the reality that we live in, we, you know, Jesus said difficult, or Paul said, difficult times are coming. And I believe 2020, we're going to witness the difficult times for yeah, sure. Yeah. And speaking uh, about not being uh, a pessimist, but being an optimistic, uh, you, you know, one thing that, that we have said with, in life school for, you know, ever since it began is that uh, we're not to be spectators yeah. in time events, we're to be participators. And that is so true. And I think now is that time when God is really saying it's time to be a participator, yes. to stand strong and to be a voice of truth in the midst of a, a, a sea of compromise. Yes. So, uh, so we're excited uh, about that. Being, and I think even, we'll get into this in the foreigner school, but um, being a voice of truth is so important right now because, you know, you, you guys probably can understand what we're talking about. You can't hardly figure out what is even the truth anymore. What this news outlet says this, and news, this news says this, and this person says this, and they contradict, contradict each other. And it's so hard to figure out what really is even the truth. And God desperately needs, like you mentioned, uh, voices of the truth, faithful witnesses of the truth who will speak God's word, and it's going to cost us. I mean, it's, it is going to cost us to speak the truth. It always has. But we've got to be an uncompromising voice of the truth, no matter the consequences. And yeah. God's raising up messengers, which is part of the Forerunner School. Yeah, 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 absolutely. The, uh, we're, we're in a, a real season, almost like a cultural revolution. Yes. There's a fight for the soul of America, but I think it'll, it'll be, so goes America, so goes the world. Exactly. It'll be a fight. It's a fight for the global culture, and uh, compromise is not, in the church is not the solution yeah. for that. Many people, have many people in the church are choosing you know, to blend in in order to reach people, uh, but I believe, and I think we, we both believe, that God is raising uh, faithful witnesses of truth in this hour to uh, combat that. Now, there, might, there will be, like you said, a cost to that uh, of, of uh, just uh, possibly persecution and, and who knows what, but, but that is where I believe the Holy Spirit is leading the, the, the church right now, is to stand up is in truth right yeah. now. I, I, you know, just to be honest, <clears throat> it's, uh, you know, and I, I'm, I'm searching all over the place to find out, okay, where are the voices speaking about the rising up of the global government that's, that's trying to push 
into the earth, and you're witnessing that right now, and so few in the body of Christ discern that, and, you know, that burdens me, to be honest with you, is we, we've got to, the, the church, for the most part, doesn't have a clue the times we live in, and that's why we have to have messengers, forerunners, to speak the truth of the times we live in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, especially, you know, especially when it comes down to even the views of the end times, es eschatology is, you know, some people say, well, all the prophecies were fulfilled in 70 A.D., or most of them were fulfilled in 70 A.D., right. a preterist view. Or some would say, well, no, uh, what's going to happen is the church is going to be victorious, and the church is going to take over uh, and take dominion in the culture post-millennial, and there's going to be a great revival or there's the amillennial, which means Jesus is just going to come back. But I mean, our, our view, which we'll get into in the in the school, is is a post is a pre, is a premillennial view that you know the Book of Revelation is to be interpreted literally, and you know except of course where it doesn't make sense to interpret literally. But you know we we go into all that in the school. But yeah, it, it's so important. You know sometimes people have thought like the end times. Eh, it's just not an irrelevant subject, but. I think what the times we're living in right now, we're seeing it is so relevant. Yeah, it could not be any more relevant yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, t tell me, what, what's your thought about the, the global church or the state of the global church right now? Well, I, I kind of hit on a lot of the points, and uh, I heard a, a, a prominent minister tweet something, and I, I really witnessed with what he said. He said, you know, this time we live in with the riots and the pandemic, it is exposing how shallow uh, the gospel that's been preached in America yeah. for decades, what the fruit has produced. Most of the church is so unprepared. And I, and I know there's a remnant. There is definitely a remnant that love God, that are going wholeheartedly for God, that have not compromised, that have, you know, like the 7,000, like Elijah's day, they have not bowed the knee to right. Baal. There is a remnant in the church that are not bowing their knee to Baal. There, there is absolutely that. But the majority of the church has just been sucked into the seeker-sensitive gospel right. that is just basically we want to be relevant above speaking the truth. And the fr we're now reaping the fruit of it. America is reaping the fruit of it. And it's not pretty. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's my well, Yeah, and, my you know, we, like we said at the beginning of this that We've ministered in Africa for a number of years, yeah. and what the seeds of what has been sown in America is being transported all over yeah. the world. We see it all over Africa, yep. and you know we have about 30 regional leaders uh, in a number of na African nations, and they are just you know reiterating exactly what you're saying: yep. a compromised gospel, a self-centered gospel, a prosperity type of gospel, you, you know, a, a, a false gospel really that won't stand. Uh, certainly won't stand in the midst of persecution. Yeah, that might be I think eighty. I think our our lead, we have about thirty or thirty five leaders in Africa from f several different countries, and they said all of them can in a, in a agreed on this is that about eighty percent of the churches in Africa are preaching a prosperity gospel. So, yeah. yeah so it's it's in America. It's in Africa. The the church. Uh, you know, is is very unprepared. And, and I say that, I don't say that with a critical heart or a judgmental heart. I say that with love, uh, for concern, and a burden, and a burden. with a burden, yeah, yeah. like a real burden. Uh, it's kind of like I have a, a shepherd's heart feeling compassion, but also the prophetic burden of, man, I'm, 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 I'm very concerned about the church and the times we're moving into. You know, because the Lord, or Paul said, that before the Antichrist comes, there will be a great falling away. I think we're, we're seeing that now, and it's going to increase. And that's why we've got to be so grounded in the truth. We, you know, right. we have got, if, if we don't have a love for the truth, then um, Paul said, God himself will send a great delusion upon us to believe what's false. So it is so important that we believe the truth in the day we live in. Right. Yeah. And be a voice of that truth. Exactly. As, as well. Exactly. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, uh, we've talked a lot about the compromise in the church. At the same time, there are there is a remnant of, yeah. of uh, men and women of God who are preaching truth, who are standing for truth, uncompromised, uh, just being a voice. And, and, and it is much like John the Baptist, a, 
a voice crying from the wilderness for uh, in terms of the contracts of the yeah. major global church. But there is a That's voice right. there, and we're excited about that. But I know that what the Lord wants to do is he wants to uh, increase that size of that remnant. That's right. Yeah, he wants it, many, many more voices are needed. Yeah. Uh, uh, God so. wants to raise up a strong, victorious, overcoming church. Uh, God wants to raise up a church that is not in compromise, that's living by the life of Christ, that is taken up a cross. And I, I think I think right now you're seeing in America the the fruit of not preaching the cross. We're now reaping that. Is mm -hmm. is there you know like Paul? is I have been crucified to the world and the world has been crucified to me. I've been crucified with Jesus Christ. And, and, and that is the, that's the gospel is, is we have, is much of the church has failed to preach the cross of Jesus Christ. I don't just mean the finished work of the cross. I mean the, the cross working the cross in us, life. the yeah, cross yeah, life yeah. to put to death our self life. But God, I, I, I'm convinced. And that's why I'm excited about this as the church's finest hours. I think you wrote a blog article about it. It's the best of times quote in Charles Dickens. Yeah. yeah. It's the best of times. It's the worst, of, the times. worst of times. Yeah. And I think that's really the, the can so define that we live in. It's going to, it's, it's challenging. It's hard. It's dark. It's glorious. It's our finest hour. We're going to see God move in ways we've never seen. And God is going to raise up a victorious, overcoming, glorious church. He's coming back for a glorious church. He's not coming from back for a church in compromise. He is going to raise up a glorious church when he comes back. And that's what, that's what our Forerunner School is about. We want to raise up a glorious church without spot, stain, or blemish. And that leads me to my, our, my next question. Why are Forerunners needed? You pretty much answered it, but just some, put it in a summary form. Why are Forerunners needed? Well, Forerunners are needed because uh, Daniel 11 talks about the people who know their God will display strength, uh, display strength and take action. Yeah. It's the people who know God. Yeah. And there are in the forerunner, what we mean by a forerunner is God is raising up a remnant that is going to go before the majority to get equipped, to get prepared. It takes, it takes time to get prepared. It takes time to be right. equipped, yeah. to know God and the people who know God are going to are the ones that are going to take action. And, and you know like you mentioned, we are not to just sit by as passive spectators in the end times while the antichrist rises up and the antichrist system rises up. Absolutely not. We are we are to know God in the secret place and take action. Um, and the other thing that forerunners are needed is, is uh, Daniel also described that there will be people that have insight with understanding. And those people with insight and understanding are going to give insight to many people. Most of the people are not, don't have a clue what's happening right now. Right. And in fact, it's like the days of Noah. And one of the things that happened in the, in the days of Noah was Jesus said explicitly they did not understand until right. the flood came and took them all away. And so God's raising up forerunners that do understand and will, like you said, they'll not only understand it, but they'll be a messenger that will give understanding. Yeah, yeah, that's very, very, very good. I mean, I think one thing that we've both noticed in this recent pandemic and uh, the rioting and all, all of that, people have no clue of a bigger, many have no clue of a bigger picture right. that's taking place yep. uh, in that and, and the, some of the agendas behind that. Right. Uh, but forerunners are needed. Um, uh, the, the way I uh, think of a forerunner, uh, you know, obviously I think we all know a forerunner is one who goes before and then brings others along. But you hit on one of those forerunners as messengers who will be a voice of truth to invite people into a new thing, uh, announce the soon coming of Christ to confront where necessary, those types of things. But also forerunners as master builders who will, uh, especially as it touches the hearts of leaders, is to give a, 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 a vision for how to create a different type of spiritual environment in their churches. Yes. Uh, and, and even for those that are not leaders in their hearts and yeah. wherever sphere of authority they might have. But, because I'm convinced that the current wineskin of church will not survive no. what is coming in no, the earth. No. 
Uh, and so we need forerunners of master. Not builders. only will the current wineskin not survive what's coming, the current wineskin will never give God what he ultimately wants. Right, exactly. Which is God's ultimate intention. Right. And right. so the forerunners are needed, messengers and master builders, to announce this is what God's ultimate intention is. This is God's eternal blueprint. This is what God intended from before the foundation of the world. And I, I look at it now, if you ask a lot of Christians, okay, what is God's ultimate intention? They would say, you know, to save people, to win the lost, to disciple the nations, but... Restore Jewish practices. Yeah, and roots and exactly. And so but, so, but all those come short of God's ultimate intentions. And so there, there's forerunners needed. You know, when we talk about the end times, you know, I've studied the end times for, for years. One of the things about the end times that I didn't hear hardly anyone say was that the end times are the context for how God's ultimate intention is fulfilled. Yeah. It's the context. In other words, God's ultimate intention is going to be fulfilled, and forerunners are needed to announce this is what God's ultimate intention is. Yes. Yes. And then, like you said, master builders who will tell us, okay, here is the uh, blueprint and the plan for how to build that. Not only what it is, but how to actually work it into your church In life, your church, how to change yeah. structures and yeah. mindsets and what you teach on and the way your services flow and all that. Yeah, yeah, we've we've been on this journey for close to thirty years now, and uh, didn't really realize it. But what, that's what the Lord has been building in our own church, our yeah. own local church, is a different spiritual environment. And and you know, I, I say that from a standpoint that we're far from being perfect in that. But we, the Lord has kind of precept upon precept given us a vision, an idea of uh, what is needed in the to create this environment. So forerunners is as master builders, but I think also uh, for as forerunners for intercessors and spiritual warriors, uh, there's a there's a real need for a different type of intercession than what yes. most are. Oh, yeah. Now there's a there's certainly a remnant that is participating in this, but uh, we won't try to expand upon it in this time. But there is prayer that ascends to the golden heavenly golden altar, Revelation chapter eight. Yeah. Uh, and very percentage-wise, a very small percentage of prayer is actually going to fill those incense bowls yeah. right now. A whole different wineskin is needed for for uh, spiritual warfare and, and intercession. And, yes. Uh, you know, forerunners are needed to, to to understand that, participate in that, and uh, explain it, teach it. It's part of the master builder, but it's also part of the uh, role of intercessors in that hour. Right, as right. Well. Another thing the forerunners do, if you think about it, uh, Noah was a forerunner. And Jesus said the days of Noah would be, or the end times would be just like the days of Noah. Well, the days of Noah were marked by God's increase, or, you know, not increasing, it just his judgments. And I think forerunners also need to understand God's God's judgments. And no, you know, so many people today don't even want to talk about God's judgments, but the end times are marked by God's judgments. And so the forerunners need to announce, you know, God's not this mean, angry God, but God is y using his judgments to bring us to the deepest level of love. Right. Uh, Isaiah, I think is Isaiah 26, is when the earth experiences your judgments, then the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. And God is going to release, and Jesus called them birth pains, an increasing measure of birth pains in the form of his judgments. And forerunners need to understand that. And with compassion and love and concern for the people, give, give people an understanding of God's heart. God's not doing this because he's angry. God's doing it because he's jealous. God's yeah. doing it because yeah. he's in love with you. God's doing it because he wants all of you. He wants a bride without spot, stain, or wrinkle. Yeah. He wants you to be that bride. Amen. And, you know, judgment does begin first in the house of God. Um, you know, and also, you know, to, to, I mean, the forerunner school, one of the, you know, we've talked a lot about the end times and stuff like that, but one of the things we're going to really focus on is intimacy with God. Yeah. That is critical, intimacy with God. Knowing Him, knowing Him as a bridegroom, having intimacy with Him, um, you know, the, the five wise virgins in Matthew 25, they knew God, they knew him intimately. And intimacy with God 
that yeah. bridal relationship of love where we feel God's love for us and we return our, his love back to him as a bride, he's coming back for a bride. Yeah. And that's what God's ultimate intention is, is, yeah. is he wants a bride. He wants a people. And that bride has to be prepared. Yes. Yeah, it's yes. not automatic the moment we're born again. Yes, we're betrothed as a bride to Christ at yeah. the point of uh, salvation. But there's a there's a preparation process that we're that's a huge in. point because so many people think you're born again, you're automatically part of the bride without any preparation. But Revelation 19:7 says the bride's made herself ready. Right. You know, so right. I mean, if you've got any more to add to that, I mean, it's it's so important. Yeah, well, and yeah. we are, you know, the and from Jewish uh, tradition. The betrothed woman was a bride, was a bride, called a bride for her bridegroom, even during that betrothal period. So right. in that sense, we are his bride, but we must make ourselves ready as a bride to, to function as the eternal wife of the Lamb uh, throughout e eternity. And so that is, I said there were four aspects, forerunners as messengers, master builders, intercessors. And the fourth one is uh, as a friend of the bridegroom. Yeah. You know, John the Baptist was called a a friend of the bridegroom, and that's a major, a major need, a major, major need in the in the global church is to have people who have an understanding of the bridal paradigm, and uh, can not only pursue it themselves, but to be a voice, uh, because very, very few people have understanding of that, and yeah. very few people are on a in a pursuit of that. Right. Uh, forerunners are needed for those things. Right. So, so many, and it's so important. So many people think when you think about the end times, well. Okay, who's the Antichrist and where is he going to rise up from and what are these different earthquakes and famines? But so few talk about as the bride making herself ready because right. Jesus is not going to come back when the church is not ready. And that's why he yeah. needs friends of the bridegroom. He needs messengers. He needs those like you talk about the spirit and the power of Elijah, forerunners that will be anointed uh, to make the bride ready um, because, you know, the Lord is going to have a bride that is like him, just yeah, like him. Yeah, yeah. Um, and messengers are needed to make that announcement and proclamation. And I, I'm convinced that is the Lord, you know, that's one of the things I'm excited about. You know, we talked about the best of times and the worst of times. I'm so excited that the Lord is going to have what he wants. He yeah, is going to yeah, have a bride yeah. made ready, a spotless, pure bride, me and you and all of us. And. We're, you know, he's going to have throughout the earth a people who love him, who are passionate for him, who have become like him internally, who have been conformed into his image and nature. And that's what gets me excited is, is he will have that. He is going to have that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, uh, yeah. The, I, I drew a blank here for a second. But one of the things I've heard this said, and I totally agree with this, that no matter how dark it gets yeah. in the end times, the Lord's not going to come back until the bride is made ready. Right. The, the amount of darkness will not determine the return of the Lord. It will be the bride made ready, Revelation 19. Yes. Uh, seven. So, uh, well, as we wrap this up, um, tell, tell us a little bit about the Forerunner School. and. Yeah, well, it's, well um, if you're interested, and I highly recommend it, if you're interested, go to the, uh, the website address is forerunnerschool.org forerunnerschool.org and uh, it's you know one, there's, there's several different aspects to it but it's a 18 it's going to go over an eight, a year and a half period it's self study we're going to meet either on zoom or in person if you live locally and we're going to um, have a lot of mentoring, a lot of discussion. One of the things we want to do, we're gonna have, we'll have self-study where you have videos and notes you can watch. One of the things we really want to build is a community. Yeah. As you mentioned, there is a remnant out there, and we want to try to, in the best way we can, help connect that remnant together. I think that's one thing that's so important in the times we live in is we've got to be connected to each other. There's strength in, in the cluster. There's strength together in the community. Uh, so the Forerunner School is going to be self-study. It's going to be discussions with each other. It's going to be meeting in person, meeting online. And it's also going to involve building community, building relationships, strengthening others who want to be those who, you know, are going in the Forerunner call, want to make people ready. So, yeah, you can find out all that you, we have uh, how many, 12 classes? 12 classes, 12 classes. over 18 months. Yeah, over yeah. 18 months. And it's free. Uh, and it's free. Yeah, we're not yeah. charging. Um, 
originally we were going to charge some, just not so much to make money, but just to uh, hopefully only have people who were committed to it. Um, but we got some feedback in terms of it was a difficult thing for some to write to to put into the, the money into it to register. So we decided to make it free. Our only desire is if you if you want to be a part of it, make it a serious commitment. Yeah. It really needs yeah. to be a serious commitment. It's it's not something that uh, you can do for take a class here or a class there. We're hoping and desiring people to commit to the entire project because. There's a lot of components that go into this idea uh, of the forerunner call, yeah. and uh, we want to be able to, to communicate those. Yeah, and, and the other thing, as I'll say, is is we've been on this journey for 20-plus years, 25 years, however long it's been, probably close to 30, yeah. uh, 25 probably. And we've learned a lot of good stuff, a lot of stuff we learned the hard way. Yes. Uh, we've kind of been able to work through, take all the bones from the meat, and so we've been able to consolidate it into the essentials you need um, in terms of a forerunner, how to be equipped as a forerunner and how to, you know, all the different classes um, or things we've learned through that journey. And so, you know, it's, it's you know, I heard someone say, if you, you know, it's kind of like when you, when you deliver, I just, I just did a teaching here. When you, that, I did a 45 minute teaching, but it took me, three days to do the preparation, but it took me years to get all that information yeah. that I just poured out into one hour. And so all the information has taken us 20 years of the journey we're in, right. you can get in, in, in 18 months. So it's taken right. us eight, over 18 years, you get it in 18 months. That's what's so great about God preparing people is you, you get everything we know and have been on for that journey for 18 years in 18 months. Yeah. And so if you're hungry, I think God is really going to use it to equip you. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, the Lord spoke to me last December. Uh, it was one of the clearest uh, invitations I've received from the Lord. D to the same level of starting life school, which now has grown to where we've uh, equipped thousands of pastors in Africa and other places, and uh, as, as strong as the invitation to start the church, which has been going on since 1991, close to 30 years now. This uh, invitation to start this school was, was at that same level of intensity from the Lord. And uh, he, he told me to birth for us, and when I say me, it was all of us, Brian and myself and others, to birth forerunners, yeah. uh, to be a Zacharias and Elizabeth, to birth forerunners, to birth John the Baptist uh, in, in uh, this hour. And so we're excited about that. If I could just capsule the vision in a phrase, it is to raise up a company of forerunner missionaries uh, and a network of forerunner mission bases uh, that can make ready and people prepared for the Lord in these last days. So, yeah. so anyway, check us out online, forerunnerschool.org, and you can register right there online. It's free, uh, but you will need to register if you want to be a part of it. And so we're looking forward. We start on we start September 1st with the uh, first part will be home study, but we'll send you the materials to all the registrants, the, the first part of the materials, and uh, you'll be ready to go. So I hope you'll join in this. Uh, it's certainly needed, and I think you'll really uh, enjoy it. It'll be a, a, a very exciting and a, and a blessed opportunity for you, I think. It, it's a, uh, so thank you, and God bless. And Looking forward to seeing you in September.